subscribe to the Light Sports and Ultra Light Flyer web video magazine with hundreds and hundreds of videos now online, including air show coverage, Rotax engine tech tips, Rotax 377, 447, 503, 532, and 582 engine rebuilding videos each two hours in length, propeller maintenance, advisors, and repairs, VRS parachute saves, Bing carb updates, and much, much more. Get a yearly subscription at www.ultralightflyer.com. We're in the light sport section, and we're looking at a car. Yeah, what is this thing? You got to wonder, don't you? Yeah, anyway, we're here at the EAA Air Venture 2010, talking with Troy Townsend from iTech. iTech is Indigenous Peoples Technology, Technology Education, and Education Center. Center. Okay, that's I got that pretty good. iTech for short. That's what you can remember. That's the name to recall. We have one of the more interesting vehicles out here on the whole field. Well, at least that's my opinion. But evidently, a few others seem to agree. Here is a. Well, flying car, rotable aircraft, you call it what you want, but this thing both goes on the ground and goes in the air. And it goes on the ground really well because you drove this all the way from Florida. They're around the Orlando area. Right. Drove it all the way up here to Oshkosh on the ground. So a lot of rotable aircraft, uh, uh, rotable aircraft or flying cars don't really want to be on the ground all that much, but here you've done this very well. So tell us, first of all, I see this flagpole here. Somehow I don't think a flagpole goes on a car, but I happen to know this one's there for a purpose. This tell me a little bit about why we got a flagpole up here. This is part of our wing deployment system. Uh, we do not kite the, pa uh, the parachute as a normal powered parachute. We have a spar, a hinge spar, sewed into the leading edge of the parachute, and we hoist the sail up this mast just like a sailboat with the hoist up the sail and it puts it in the attitude to fly. For You're flight. using these straps I see on the back side of the pole here. You're kind of running it up like a flag goes yeah. up a pole. Is that That's right? right. It's a telescoping uh, fiberglass carbon fiber pole. Now when you get where you're going, Troy, that is you fly in and land somewhere and the idea here was that you need to be able to land in a very small area That's right. and, and so you want to hold the canopy up so it doesn't drag and rough stuff and get torn and yeah. tangled and like that. But what do you do with that thing when you land and you want to go to a car mode? Well the parachute stays up, you hoist the parachute down, you hinge the spar, it packs up in here. This is the parachute. The mask contracts down and stores back on the machine, on the side of the machine. And it just goes on, the, lays down on the, well, not on the other side of it. Right, anyway, right. Kind of yep. lays down right in here, doesn't it? And it parks down. Isn't that interesting? And then here, now we've got a pole here that's kind of for air show purposes, so people that's don't right. run into this thing and hit themselves in the head. But normally, if you take this part out of your mental image, that's right. this is the whole thing that holds the wing, right? This is the parachute hang point right here. Okay, cool. Well, Tell me a little bit more about the basic concept here as a ground vehicle, because here we got now. You're, well, let me back up a little bit first and say you're using an elliptical wing that's as opposed to the more square wing that's common in powered parachutes, and you do that, I assume, to get a little more speed out of it. That and a lot more lift for a smaller wing. The elliptical parachute is a lot more efficient in flight. We figure if we put a square wing on this, it would be a, close to a thousand square feet. We can put a what is the square footage of the it's one you do? It's about 520, and it's a full really? elliptical. And you're able because a five a typical powered parachute uses about a 550 square foot wing. That's very that's common right. number. In that's a, a square. In elliptical, that's about a 300. Okay, all right. So you got versus efficiency versus square. So if it was a square wing mm -hmm. and and if it had to be the right size, it'd be like 800 or would, some number it'd, like it'd that. It'd be way up there, which would just be too unmanageable. And now you've got this great big thing. And So That's when you right. land with it, and I've seen your videos. they got some great videos on their website. We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll give you their address. But the videos show it taxiing downwind, and uh, it appears like the wing just stays up there very nicely. Our mass system and wing deployment system gives a powered parachute some crosswind capabilities. We do not let the parachute get in the horizontal component of lift like this where it would ever want to roll you over. We make it stay in this position so all it can do is weather vane. And, it's, and when it gets a gust of wind, it just tries to fly. It doesn't try to pull you over. Excellent. Control systems on it, though. You've got to have two separate control systems to, to operate this in the air and on the ground. You know what, Dave? Maybe we can understand this better if we have a look inside. That's right. Okay, so you're in it now. You look quite comfortable. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I've flown a few powered parachutes. Not one of them had a steering wheel. 
None of them had a gas pedal down there like that. This is just sort of a different kind of flying machine. But I understand it's really not. This does the whole job, is that right, That Charlie? does the whole job. The same controls you drive it with, you fly it with. You fly it with a gas pedal and the steering wheel. If you stick your camera down in yeah. here, Dave, you can see the gas pedal right down here. I'm kind of pointing at it, putting my foot on it. And then what's this control right next to it? The control right next to it is the electric stepper motor that actuates the, this, the electric steer, steering. So say you want to turn right, if you can see it down here. Okay. But not, but, turn it right, it's going to come in right. Oh, turn yeah, it fast, right. Okay, you see the uh, you turn it fast, here. it's going to come in fast. You turn it a little bit, it's going to come a little bit. Okay, I'm pulling up on the line here just to show you. Sure. These are the lines that control the parachute, but they're also controlling the wheel. You can see the wheels move at the exact same time here. And this motion that I'm showing here, this is not true. I'm just doing it for illustration. And that's the steering line. And it right. also follows the uh, manual backup system. I was just going to say, I see a, foot, a place for my foot down there. So, so. If everything goes wrong, this is designed to park out. The electric system will park out. So then you can fly it, land it just like a normal powered parachute with your feet. You can flare it and steer it. Just offhand, sounds like you've been thinking this through pretty carefully. When did the project start? You know, we've been working with powered parachutes for about seven years. This one's been in development for about three years. Only three years? I think it's pretty remarkable. They've uh, cut a lot of new ground here as far as I can tell. But the neatest thing to me about it is not only the fact that it looks like a lot of fun on the ground, but it's all the same controls, given the backup, that's yes, right. but otherwise, you just do what you do in a car. That's right. Well, that's got to make this, I mean, powered parachutes are easy to learn how to fly in anyway, but that that's has to true. make this pretty It's a simple. dream boat to fly. You fly it with one hand, you can use the gas pedal, or you can use the dash-mounted throttle. you got a, you got a Vernier throttle right here above my hand. And you've got the pedal on the ground that we looked at before, so you can use can you use either one? Either one or both together. On the ground too though? That's right. So you got cruise control. That's what we did all the way up here. <laughs> I like it. We want to get more information, where do we have to go? Well we wanted to, first of all the name of the company we already talked about, as you can see on Troy's hat is iTech. The name of the product is the Maverick. That's right. Which is a pretty good name for a Maverick vehicle. And by the way, this one do they all come with the enclosure on them? That's right, and you can get any color you want. <laughs> as long as it's black? <laughs> That was an old Henry Ford joke. But. <laughs> That's right. So the name of the, the name of the product is Maverick, and the website then is maverickLSA.com. That's and do you have a flight report on this one? I don't yet, Dave, oh, but uh, I'm going to be paying a visit down to Orlando when we get back down there for the winter. We're going to have and, to change that. And we're going to have to change that indeed. i got to go fly this thing. i got to drive it, too, because both of them turned me on. That's Thanks so much for talking to us today, Troy.